Jordan. Jordan posting up the most important game of his life. He's only got 67 points so far. Ewing trying to stop him in the low paint. Dush, another dunk. It looks like it looks like Ewing, yes, crying now, knowing he's not gonna ever win a championship. Jordan steals it from Ewing and slams it. We're going to the finals. We're going to the finals. Yeah. Hi, I'm Eric Braverman. My friends call me EB. You can call me Seshla, the Windwalker. I guess you can call me a storyteller. The story I'd like to tell you today is the story of the fans of a basketball player, but not just any player, of Michael Jordan, the greatest ever. The most popular person on this spinning blue marble we call Earth. A man the Smithsonian Institute says personifies popular culture. As we investigate further, we're going to see it's the story of a fanatical following of cult-like proportions, of a loyalty and a dedication generated by a sports figure who by merely jumping around with his tongue hanging out has firmly established his place in history alongside the Lincolns, the Kennedys, the Presleys, the most respected icons of our time. But we must remember that this is not a Michael Jordan story. You've already seen the interviews. You've seen the countless magazines and books on Jordan. No, rather, this is the story of his fans, the people that have given energy to his legacy, the people that have elevated him to a godlike status. Because even with his fantastic skills and incredible physical ability, without his fans, Michael Jordan is nothing more than a really, really, really good basketball player. So join me now as we take this journey, a journey across this great country, to meet the amazing individuals who don't just use Jordan as entertainment, but as an inspiration, a lifestyle, a drug, and yes, even a religion. Welcome to the world of Airmania. Hey, are you guys Michael Jordan fans? Little guy here, one of his first words was Michael Jordan. He is the bomb. He is the bomb. You know what I'm saying? What if he explodes? <laughs> huh, what, if, what if he who? What if he explodes? He's the bomb. He ain't gonna slow. He's too, he too crucial for that. I eat, breathe, sleep Michael Jordan. He's, he's Jesus reincarnated. I would give my life for Jordan. Yes, yes! Well, why, why do you love Jordan so much? Why are you so excited about him? I'm excited because he's the guy. He's the real one we put on earth for us to have joy, joy, joy. Well, so it's basketball and and sexual attraction. That's what that's what the Jordan mystique is. That's it. Why does he stick his tongue out so much? The power, it's the power. I do it too. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I just recently got married in June, and as a theme with the Bulls and all that, I had a red and black wedding. Yeah, I had the Jordan tuxedo. I wore my black and red Jordan at the reception. Everywhere I'd go, I'd wear the glasses and say the hot mom for Michael. How many different institutions have you been in? Did you shave your head because of Michael Jordan? Yeah, because I want to be like Mike. How many WNBA players do you think it would take to beat him in a game? About 500. 500? How many of your friends would it take to beat him in a game? 1,000. Who do you think was a better actor, Bugs Bunny or Michael Jordan? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. I think Michael Jordan was much more incredible because he scored more points than Bugs did, of course. Who do you think is a better actor, Shaquille O'Neal or Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan! Wow. He's like a, he's like a modern day yeah. superhero. You see the storm and the painting? He comes to the rescue. Every time we, the team is in trouble, he comes to the rescue. If Michael Jordan was never born, where would you be now? I'd probably be in a box. Curled up? Yeah, just curl up in a box with no blanket. Just, you know, what, what would you need a blanket for? Because I'd be cold, you know, it's Chicago, it's one of these cities, let's go.
I would spend a day with Michael Jordan before I would probably win a million dollars. I've collected for about nine years now, and I've really put all my heart and soul into collecting, and I really feel like that everything I do, or in, and when I get up every single day, it's it's something to do with Michael Jordan. Uh, how do you feel when you watch him play? Um, I have this uh, emotion that just runs through me. If he makes a, a good move or dunks the ball or uh, just a, a, a tough shot, I mean, I get cold chills. You know, if the Bulls are down or they're losing or he's off that night or they're uh, kind of saying, you know, well, he, uh, father of time's arms is kind of wrapping around him, it kind of puts tears almost on my on my eyes. It's just if you'll watch him and if you'll just, just watch his moves and, and watch his games and interviews, you actually just you just want to be him. You just want to be able to, to, to get into his shoes and be able to do that and, and be on top of the world and, and feel like that uh, you can come out every night and have a challenge when really, you know, you're on top of the world. Uh, he was watching a Michael Jordan game and uh, he was saying, he was just really pumped up. I mean, you could just see it. And he was just, oh, his face and everything, just like kind of swollen out and really red. And mom, mom, watch him make this shot. You gotta see this. And uh, he just, I wanted to take his blood pressure because I, I thought, you know, you just look like you're gonna have a stroke. Explode. <laughs> and it, it was very high. It was uh, close to 200, the top one was. Bottom one was over a hundred. That's abnormal for someone that age. Well, I play basketball. Just trying to get better, trying to, to do moves like he does, and just trying to go around whenever I uh, play ball against other guys around here. Just hear, to hear them say, you know, you know, that's Jordan. That's a Jordan move. It's, it's, you know, it's something. You know, have to experience, you know. It means a lot around here. First piece, it's a 1986 Michael Jordan, which is Air Jordan, uh, coat my mom bought me for my birthday. It's really what got me hooked, this symbol right here is why I started liking it and I started collecting. I remember one specific time when me and my brother Lauren was fighting and he was in my bedroom threatening to break some of my stuff and tear some of my stuff up so I ran in his bedroom and locked the door and I told him I was going to rip all of his Michael Jordan posters off the wall so he told me if I didn't open the door he was going to kick it down and my mom and dad wasn't home at the time so I just laughed at him and kept on saying I was going to tear his stuff up so he kicked the door down and when he came in, he put me out. Not, he didn't hurt me, but I don't know how far he'd went over his Michael Jordan stuff. It's like a soul link. And he just, every shot that Michael Jordan makes, when he goes up in the air, the way he does his hands, his expressions with his face, and, and you can feel like the essence of his soul. He picks the same, it's just like it's in him. He knows exactly what he's doing, what Michael's doing. Everybody has something inside of them that they can't find. And I think that um, sometimes it comes out and, and some of us and sometimes it don't. Um, I feel like that uh, Michael Jordan was the only thing I've ever had in me that, that should have come out. And, and I think that there's a reason for everything and I feel like that God made me to collect it. I, I don't understand it, I don't know why, and I don't question God, but there's definitely something that makes me. And I really, you know, inside I don't really know exactly what that would be. But, you know, I love it and I'm in love with that and I'm glad that it is me. All systems check. Up, up, and away! Hey. Whew. Whew. 
When two freak brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, first decided to ride their bicycle with wings off this hill in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, they never could have imagined transcontinental flight, the Blue Angels, bad food, bad service, and bad attitudes from sky waitresses at 35,000 feet. They certainly never could have foreseen a man, one man, who less than 100 years later could achieve flight with no machinery at all. How do you think Jordan flies? His shoes have wings. I thought his shirt has wings. Maybe his balls have wings, too. If you watch certain uh, plays in slow motion, it uh, sure seems he could stay uh, suspended longer than other guys. And, you know, there's times where you almost think, you know, you think he's at his highest point and he needs to get a little higher. So he says, I need to get a little higher. I'm going to get a little higher. And there I go. I'm a little higher now. I like the way he flies through the air. So he really, he yeah. actually flies. Yeah. How do you think he does that? What makes him fly? Do you think it's like, is, he, is it his, the food he eats or the shoes? I think it's the, 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 the love of the game and the people, the way he gets up. And so if you love anything enough, it might give you the ability to fly? Uh, not me, because I'm, I'm an old man. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't work out. Well, I mean, you know, they basically think I'm kind of crazy because uh, I wear all the Jordan clothing and uh, I have all of the uh, Jordan mobilia stuff, cards, uh, trailer, everything pertains to Jordan that I own, just about it. So, Mr. Kate, are you the ultimate Michael Jordan fan? Yes, sir. Oh, explain why. Why are you the ultimate Michael Jordan fan? Well, I try to collect every uh, piece of mobilia uh, that Jordan has. Uh, I just uh, really enjoy going out and doing shows and trying to find uh, Michael Jordan stuff. And uh, uh, I just feel that uh, I've got a pretty good size collection of Michael Jordan stuff. What's the size of it? Well, I probably got uh, two rooms completely full. I have probably uh, 8,000 uh, Jordan cards. Uh, I have everything from uh, watches, uh, Space Jam, shoes, uh, every item that I can find I'll try to get that I don't already own. I was going through these hotel lobbies in Dallas and uh, I was dressed in all this bull's uh, clothing, and uh, I had on all these uh, big uh, bull's necklaces and everything, and they would all come up to me and wanted to know if I had any extra tickets to the game or anything they thought I was associated with the bull's organization. The lady, she happened to walk over to my uh, table, and she said, could I ask you a question? And I said, sure. And she says, uh, by any chance, uh, you're not Michael Jordan's agent, are you? I said, well, lady, I'm sure not Michael Jordan's agent. I wished I was, but I, I'm just up here doing a card show. But this happens to me all the time when I do shows all over the country. Every time I go somewhere, somebody will ask me that question that if they've never, ever seen me. But now I'm beginning to get uh, more known across the country. Every time I'm out and somebody says something to me, it just makes you feel good on the inside. When they come out with the movie Space Jam, well, uh, we got real excited and we wanted to own all the Space Jam stuff that we could get a hold of. But I uh, bought this trailer to haul my stuff in, and, and this is uh, what I haul my Jordan stuff in when I go out and do shows. But people all. that don't know you, what do they think? Well, Michael most Jordan? Of the time, or what? When you're driving down the road, they'll see the trailer, and, and all of a sudden they'll say, oh gosh, They'll look and they'll think it's Michael Jordan pulling the trailer coming by or something like that. My goal right now is to uh, get uh, 23 Jordan rookie cards. And I think right now I have approximately, I haven't counted the last account, I've got 17. You know, these, these right here, all across here and up here, these are all the rookie cards, his rookie cards. They book for a thousand apiece. This particular card right here is just one of his star cards out of the star set. It books for 950. This is a unique card I've seen only one of them. This is a 
Prism Jewel sticker card. It looks for 400. A signature of the Times. It's a uh, redemption card, trade card. It looks for 4,000. So right here, this is $21,000 worth of uh, little pieces of cardboard. Uh, you would say in that vicinity, yes. And I wear his cologne. I wear his socks. I wear the glasses. I wear his shoes just about every day. I just about use everything that uh, of his. I eat the Wheaties, I eat, uh, or uh, I've eaten the Franks, I drink the Gatorade. Uh, I, I do just about everything that Jordan endorses. Is there anything in your life that makes you feel better than a Michael Jordan victory? Oh, n no, I don't think so, really. Not that I know of right, now, right off the top of my head. Uh, I get very, that, that is one of the most exciting things when I'm watching the NBA game and he makes that last shot. We're here with Doug, one of the ultimate Jordan fans. Of course, of course, big time, big time. North side of Chicago here. How come? What makes you what makes you such a large Jordan fan? The fact that you'll spend an incredible amount of money on a piece of cardboard like that? He is the man. He's Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, Dwayne Gretzky, all into one, and he's the man. How much How much did you spend on that thing? Um, forty five hundred dollars. Forty five hundred dollars. What What's the most you ever spent on anything else in your life? A car, a college education, anything ever come close to this? This is the most I ever spent on one item. What's your most valuable, most prized Michael Jordan piece? Uh, probably a prototype Jordan card that they only made two of, and NBA rejected the card and gave it back to the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and I got one of them. How'd you get that? Paid about $4,200 for it. $4,200 for a card. Yeah. Are you married, sir? Yep. How much was the engagement ring? I think it was about 150 So <laughs> And you are the big winner, taking home the big, most expensive Jordan card. What is it? It's um, it's a game worn jersey autograph, uh, Michael Jordan. It's uh, worn by him in ninety in the uh, year ninety two, ninety three. Are you a little upset that maybe Kobe Bryant's taking a little bit of the spotlight? Do you remember him? Remember Kobe Bryant? He played on the West Coast. Need a new ID? How about a new driver's license? How much, you ask? A mere $13,500. A bargain to be able to buy booze as the greatest basketball player ever. Would you like to buy Michael Jordan's leg casts back from 1985? Only 10,000 bucks. Too much? How about some Air Jordan DNA then? Rumor has it the owner found some of Jordan's actual hairs in the cast. 100 bucks per hair. You remember Jurassic Park, right? I don't think it's him. Now, you're one of the Jordan fans. You think there's too much hype and hysteria about just the guy who plays basketball? People almost have, like, religious implications yeah. about how they feel about him. That's the world these days. I mean, they've, you know, people just get really psyched about celebrities, and he's one of the biggest. So that's, that's just society these days, I guess. But what do you think about these fans that are, like, overwrought, like camping out in the hotel rooms and, or outside the hotel waiting for them and chasing the bus and sending them all this nonsense in the mail? People are actually sending money in the yeah. jumping corporate. What do you think about that? They're nuts. That's it? Yeah. Plain and simple? Yeah. How's that affected you? Would, is well, it? Would, I mean, would you wait at a hotel like three in the morning to see the guy? I mean, he's, you know, he's a great guy and he's, just, you know, celebrity and all, but, you know, I've seen parents with their kids at like two in the morning on a Wednesday night, you know, I mean, feel free to send your kid to school tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, but for the, you know, for the most part, I think people are, uh, are pretty cool about it. I mean, every once in a while you run into a, somebody a little wacko, but in 1995, summer of 95, they were filming Space Jam in Long Beach, all well, the baseball scenes. And there was, you know, an opportunity in the paper, it, they said, you know, you can come in and be an extra and just, you know, fill out the seats in the, in the baseball field. And, and so I went down there and I, and I was an extra. At one point, he decided to come to the crowd and shake hands. And needless to say, he didn't get to everyone and I was among the people that he didn't get to. And, that really devastated me, you know, because this was something that I felt that I was 
you know, building up to in my life. And so at that point, I became a little more determined to make it happen. I was about 16. I met him. He was doing an appearance at a, an autograph signing at a local mall here in Chicago. And I got out of line when I saw him coming in. He was being rushed in by a bunch of security guards. And I walked over. I wanted to, you know, beat the line and meet him really quick. And I had these pictures for him to sign. And I ran over, and I think there were like five guards, and three of them grabbed me really roughly and pulled me back, and everything fell out of my hand. And I remember standing there, and I was feeling, I was trying to get to the pictures, and he was being rushed past me, and he stopped them. He walked back to me, and he picked up all of the pictures, and he walked over to me, and he like pushed them back a little bit, and he handed it to me, and he said, I'm really sorry, I apologize. And I, I just thought that was really sweet, because most people, most, you know, people in his position probably would have walked past and not done anything, but he picked them up and handed them to me. I paid $15,000 to go play uh, at the Michael Jordan Senior Flight Schools for guys 35 and over. It was in Las Vegas for four days at Bally's. 15000 bucks. hung out with Michael, gambled with Michael, played ball with Michael, shot free throws against Michael, lost to Michael the first day, promised, you know, and it was $400, gave him 100 The second day I beat him, hit five out of five, he hits four out of five, right? He promised he'd come on my show, right? I'm still waiting. So I don't know, that heaven is a playground trial? I think them guys might have had some there. I've been waiting a year for Michael to come on my show. He kept saying he'd come on and he did. On November 21st, 97, they were, they were, they had a Clipper game as a sports arena and I, and I went to the arena that morning, you know, to try to catch, you know, Michael coming out of the bus or coming into the bus. Uh, we were walking into the arena, and we're walking down the steps, suddenly a ball just came flying toward us. And then we looked toward the court and saw who it was who threw that ball and it was Michael. He was just laughing his head off. And then finally it came to the moment when Michael and I met and Michael um, was being interviewed at the scores table and he just got up, gave Kadeem a big hug and Kadeem, being the nice guy that he is, immediately shifted Michael's attention toward me and saying, this is my, this is 